small firms? I'll start for NTIA. Uh, in our application process, we made it clear that um, applications brought by um, the SDBs, the socially disadvantaged businesses, would receive extra consideration. This appears t in two parts of our evaluation. We, we have four areas in which we review applications. And in two of the areas, purpose and viability, um, the reviewers evaluating these applications are directed to give extra consideration in terms of extra scoring for projects that have either, where the applicant is an SDB or where the applicant has partnered with an SDB. Um, those two categories account for over 50 percent of the total score of an application. So depending on how the reviewer evaluates the application, they can give uh, a substantial weight to, the, to that. And in fact, in one of the categories, they cannot even give a, a perfect score unless an SDB is actually part of the application. Okay. Um, Mr. Alderson. We also provided an advantage for small and disadvantaged businesses in our application process. We did extensive outreach along with the NTIA throughout the country, particularly trying to reach out to small businesses. Uh, one of the problems we've had, of course, you've talked about the application process being unwieldy. We did agree to have a two-step process so that rather than have to provide all of the information in the first round, there would be a two-step application process where the applicant would give um, initial information and we would ask certain applicants that were to advance into the process for additional information so that a small business would not be burdened with the entire uh, need to provide all the detailed financial information in the first round but rather we'd give them a two-round process and also during the application process we found some issues uh, in the system that were making it difficult for businesses to get their applications in we tried to respond to that by providing an extra week to respond allowing um, applicants who are having issues to get us their their, their applications through different media if it wasn't working through our uh, online intake system. Uh, you, you provided stats on number of firms applying. Do you have any preliminary estimates of how m much money will actually go to small firms? We don't know yet. We're still in the middle of the application process and it's very difficult to predict who is going to uh, end up with the awards. We know how many we got in, but we don't necessarily know yet how many will go out to small businesses. That's true for us as well. Uh, Mr. Strickland, the requirement that BTOP applicants provide matching funds of 20% could prove a major obstacle for small businesses, and especially now given the economic climate and the fact that they are having so much uh, trouble in accessing affordable capital. Given that the NTIA has the authority to grant waivers, how is your agency working to reduce this challenge for sm small companies? Right. Well, you're correct that in, in the first instance, we do have the uh, waiver authority where an applicant can make a compelling right. case that they were unable to uh, pr provide the full match. We can take that into consideration. We have not yet take brought forward any of those requests for decision yet and will only do so as projects go through the due diligence process. The other thing that I guess I would, would urge um, consideration of is the fact that one of the big benefits of this program, even in communities that don't actually receive funding from us, is the discussions that this program has generated all across the country. And we're getting groups together who haven't been talking to each other in the past uh, to talk about how can our community be served by the broadband grant program and organizing themselves in partnerships and consortia in terms of putting applications together. So um, even if an individual small business might find the application process challenging, might have concerns about finding the matching dollars on its own, we are seeing case after case of groups of entities forming together, banding together to bring an application to us. We think that that's a very important and interesting development that the act has caused without spending a single dollar, and we hope to see that sort of organizational activity continue on across the nation uh, as a way of people to kind of bring their demand, aggregate their demand together into a project that um, maybe we'll be able to fund, but even if we're not, it becomes perhaps okay. a more attractive project for private industry to fund. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, you're supposed to um, announce grant and loan awards by November 7th. Are you uh, on schedule to meet this target? Well, we said uh, uh, no sooner than November 7th, but mm -hmm. we're, we're really looking like it's more likely to be in December possibly. We may be able to get some out in November yet. 
uh, not clear, but given the complexity and the overwhelming demand for the program, uh, it appears that that is slipping by at least a few weeks. So what type of um, updates have you given to the applicants uh, regarding their pending applications? Well, we're still evaluating most of the applications. We have sent some forward to due diligence, and we've asked for that second round of information from a handful of applicants, and we're considering asking more uh, for that information in the very near future. So we generally I have not given them a lot of updates. We're still going through and processing those applications. Okay. Uh, some small service providers, uh, Mr. Aldestein, uh, have been critical of the requirement given the RUS, an exclusive first lien on projects receiving federal money. Many small firms have suggested that this was a dis, uh, detractor to even applying. Is anything being done to mitigate this challenge for small applicants? Yes, we are looking at different legal opportunities for them. I actually spoke before the hearing with the representative who will testify this afternoon for the American Cable Association who indicated for them it was a big hurdle, and we understand that. Obviously, uh, we have a very... Um, long history in doing loans and we tend to put a very uh, strong first lien on the assets of the company in order to secure the position of the United States so that we can ensure that we're, our, our position is protected. That's critical for a number of reasons, not only to protect the taxpayers but also uh, to protect the program so that going forward we can continue to have that 1% default rate I talked about mm -hmm. and to the extent that we do get defaults there's a, either a small or minimized loss to the United States. That being said, I understand that for small businesses they uh, have a hard time because they may have financing out from a private uh, bank or financier, and we come in and say we need to have the first lien, and that can create a conflict with their existing um, financial Violating structure. the terms of those uh, loans that have been granted to them. Exactly. So that requires either a, a renegotiation with their existing financier or some fear about applying in the first place. Normally what we do in this situation is uh, do a individualized custom mortgage and work with the other lenders to come up with an arrangement and accommodation. In the case of this program, our concern is that because of the size and the scope and the number of applications that are coming through in short order, that it's more difficult for us to do a custom mortgage for each one of the applicants, which makes it tougher basically to accommodate these concerns. We are uh, So how can you mitigate that for them? Our, our, our plan to mitigate is a good question, is, is to think about are, are there some different options for mortgages that we could provide. We provided a model on our application um, portal where people could see what it would look like to have the first lien, which is the fairly strong one. I think it might have scared away some applicants, and understandably so. Now we're looking at coming up with maybe a, a variety of them. Rather than having custom ones for each applicant that comes in, maybe a, a small number, a limited number, of different options that they could choose from, some of which may accommodate their existing uh, financial arrangements. Uh, and we're, this is we're a very important issue for small companies, and I hope that you can get a way to mitigate such a requirement. Thank you. We will try to do that. Uh, Mr. Graves. Thank you, Madam Chair. Graves, the ranking member. 